Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a good morning so far. Let's begin Friday with another episode in our Firebase 3 real-time chat application tutorial. Now, the last episode, we implemented a way to send images to various users in our system. So I'm gonna show you how that looks like right now. And I'm gonna talk about how uh, we're going to improve the implementation to uh, not crop the images that we send over. So let's look at the similarity here in the middle and logged in as John Snow. I can click into Sam Tarley's message log right here. And upon sending an image, I'll show you what happens if I send Brianne's image here. And so we send it off to Firebase. And the moment that it gets entered in, we get a notification to update our collection view with this image in here. So you notice how it's kind of cropped off. Her head is not showing. And perhaps this will be more apparent with Jon Snow as well. So sending that, you see how the entire image is not being shown through the entire cell. So the implementation I want to show you guys today will actually give us the entire image inside of the cell. So if I unlock my phone and come into the chat log for Tyrion Lannister here, you notice how all these images are actually sized properly. So for example, this is the entire image and this is the entire image. And if I send another image, perhaps from my moments, and we'll send this image here, send it, gets sent over, and we have this right here. So that's what that looks like. And we want to fix our current application so that the cropping doesn't occur inside of the chat log controller. All right, let's begin by moving some things off the screen and uh, moving this to the corner here. So we're gonna take a look at chat lock controller right here. I'm just trying to run the application to make sure I'm at the point where I want to start. So here we go. We get this, this, and that. So how do we actually figure out how to make these images not crop so that we can uh, include the entire image inside of the cell? Well, the first thing we need is to actually send over um, the image height and the image width along with the image URL when we're using this method called send message with image URL. So remember this method gets called whenever we pick the image from the picker, we call it upload to Firebase storage using image. Eventually, when that's done, we get the URL of the image and then we send it uh, to Firebase database, eventually populating it as one of these nodes right here with an image URL. So. In addition to image URL, I'm going to send in something called image width and image height. And perhaps to make this a little bit easier to read, I'm going to cut this out and paste it to the very end of this values dictionary. So having done that, I'm going to send also the image width to be something and the image height to be something else. So where do I get these two values from, right? For example, when I try to send an image from this picker here, if I select this image, I actually send it to this method here, upload to Firebase storage using image, and this is the image. And inside of here, I want to actually send over an image inside this method as well. So I'm going to include a second parameter of image UI image, and in here, I can just send it in as uh, the image like that. So having that available now, all we have to do is access image.size.width and image.size.height, giving us the exact, exact values that we need. So if we run this application now, I'm gonna show you what our node will look like once we pump into it another uh, image message like this. So camera roll, let's select this image for now choose and bam. So let's ignore this crash for now. And this is the last node that got entered. We see image width uh, down here and image height as well. So with these two values, I can figure out how tall these cells really need to be. So before we can go into that calculation, I want to fix this crash that is currently showing up in the log right here. Essentially, it's saying that the class uh, message is not key value coding compliant for the key image height. Uh, kind of a cryptic message probably for some of you guys, but essentially it means that it's trying to set some kind of property on message called image height. 
So we actually need these two properties like this ns number and ns uh, ns number for image height and width. So uh, I don't really like how it's crashing like this, and the crashing is sort of unpredictable every time a new property gets entered into one of these nodes. So the way to actually fix this is to do something else, um, which is to provide a constructor using a dictionary instead. So I'm just going to write this out right now, a dictionary constructor of string to any object, like so, and here we go. We just call super init, and then we just have to set up some values based on this dictionary. For example, we can call uh, from id equals dictionary, uh, what's in here, from id, and we can just cast this down as a string. So this is how this is going to work. We have to set it up for the rest of these, for the rest of these properties, but let me just build the project first, and then you'll see a couple of errors right here. And let's look at the second one for now. So this one says, it has, even has a comment of saying, potential of crashing if keys don't match, and that's the current crash that we see with image height. So instead of using this empty constructor, let's use the dictionary constructor with the dictionary of this value up here. So we can actually remove these two lines here. And if we wanted to clean this up even further, perhaps we can cut this and just put it in here like this. So I don't like having unnecessary lines in my code. So that's the first fix to our application. Now we can fix this as well to use the dictionary a dictionary like that, and we can remove this uh, set values for key setter, and we should be good to go. So if I run this now, I don't think I'm gonna see anything in my app. Well, <clears throat> okay, so nothing shows up because if you go back to the message class, none of these other properties are being set up. So. I'm just going to copy and paste this perhaps four times like that. And then I will get some space for you guys down here. And I need these two properties as well. So what do I do now? So for these couple of string properties, I will use text, text, and two ID, which is this and this. And I'm going to copy this, let's see, three times down here. And this will be image URL, like that. And inside of, let's see, timestamp, we'll use timestamp, timestamp. This will be NS number. And for image height, we need this and that. And this will be as NS number. And image width will be this and that. And this will be NS number. So having done all of that, the application should no longer crash every time we introduce a new property into our message node. Uh, so that's pretty easy. And our application is now looking somewhat uh, okay, I guess. <laughs> but we still have to fix the issue with the image heights uh, not being respected inside of that cell. So let's go ahead and fix that, why don't we? So to fix this, first thing I want to do is I want to establish a constant width for all of these image cells. And to do that, remember inside of child controller cell for item at index path, there's this line on 254 here where we actually change the bubble width anchor constant to some kind of estimated constant, which gives us this estimated width right here for the text. So uh, if we, actually just say here else if message dot image URL not equal nil, it's going to fall into this else case uh, instead. And the reason why it doesn't come in here is because the node for a um, an image message doesn't actually have text. So it'll fall in this node. So uh, fall in here if it's an image message. So that's the comment. And uh, what do we need to do to figure out how to establish a constant width for each one of these images? Well, we can say cell.bubble with anchor constant equals perhaps some kind of value. Like 200 is probably okay. 
and we're in the application, you'll see that the effect that this will have, which will push these images um, like this. And so we still have the bug where these images aren't loading properly. Uh, if I come back here and bring it back, we'll get the images to be correct again. So we'll fix that bug perhaps a little later as well. Now to get the height to actually um, fit the entire image, we go to the method called size for item at index path. So I'm just hitting control six to bring up that guy. So inside of here, we can kind of do the same thing. I just check for whenever the uh, image has a text versus an image URL or one of these with height guys. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to cut this guy out and I want to get a variable for this. So let me just remove this comment first and I can say, let message equal messages, let's see, index path the item. That'll give me this right here. So I just need message, the variable. And so here's what we are going to do down here. So if uh, else if message dot image URL not equal nil, we can say height is just some value of perhaps one, two, three, or perhaps 120. So ring this, these uh, image cells will all have a height of 120 now. So do, 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 running, 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 there we go. And this is now 120. So you see how it's already looking better, but we don't want to use a constant value like this. We actually want to figure out exactly what the height needs to be because all of these images have different heights. Now to do this, we need to uh, figure out what the actual image height and width is and we can do that inside of this if statement right here with a unwrapping of if let uh, image width equals message dot image width like that. And we can actually just get the double value or the float value out of it. And uh, you use comma image height equals message dot image height. So nothing too difficult here. And now inside of here, we can get the uh, image width and uh, image height. So we can access these two variables inside of this if case now. And how do we figure out how tall this uh, actual height is? Well, if you guys remember uh, in geometry, <laughs> way back in the day, you actually were taught this uh, calculation here. If you have two similar rectangles, you can figure out the height with this uh, equation of height one Let's see, let's put a comma here. Height one, let's see, H1 over W1 equals H2 over W2, where H1 is the height of the first rectangle, uh, W1 is the width of the first rectangle, and likewise uh, for this right here, for the second rectangle. So this is how you would figure out the height given uh, these three values. So. If I wanted to solve for H1, I'm going to solve for H1 here. So solve for H1, you would get H1 equals uh, H2 divided by W2 times W1. So with this calculation, I can actually figure out just what the exact height needs to be. And uh, I will fill in these values right here. So I'm going to say height, which is H1, is equal to height 2, which is image height right here. See image height and divided by image width times uh, W1. So W1 is actually this 200 value that I use right here. So I'm just going to use 200 right now. And then we will need to cast this entire calculation as a CG float value because height is actually a CG float. So running this, you'll see that the calculation for the entire height of our cell, so size for item is used to calculate the height for our cell, we get the height to be like this. So the reason why these two images are still not correct is because the images or the message node doesn't contain the width and height properties. So an easy way of actually resetting everything is to just blow away the user messages node and uh, we'll, get a, we'll get to start from a blank slate right now. 
So nothing is in here for John Snow. I'm going to message Sam again. I'm going to say hello, Sam there, and uh, send him an image. So let's send him the Igri image here, and sending, 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 and we get this perfect uh, sizing for her image. So if we want to send another image, for example, this one right here, you'll see that it will not be cropped, and it actually shows from the top of her head to the bottom of her sheet sword right there. And if we send another image, we will get, you know, exactly what we need. So that looks pretty darn good. <clears throat> okay, pretty awesome. Now, what is it that I want to show you guys now? <clears throat> Well, let's see here. So going into chat log controller, I kind of want to just remove the console for now. In the last episode, something I didn't mention while I was coding uh, was the fact that I copied and pasted a lot of this code that sends a message into Firebase database. And what I want to do is I want to refactor some code. So the code that I copied and pasted it was this entire bit and I pasted it inside of this method called send message with image URL. So to make this easier to follow, I'm just going to cut all of that code and paste it directly underneath uh, the copied method here. So uh, for some of you guys that are kind of starting out as iOS developers or programmers, you definitely do not want to copy and paste all of this code because the moment you modify one thing here, you're probably going to have to modify it down here as well. So keeping track of all this uh, is pretty difficult and you'll introduce a lot of bugs if you have uh, code that is duplicated everywhere inside of your controllers. So how do we fix this is the question at hand. Well, let's see what we can do. And uh, I want to tell you that the only difference between these two methods is actually this values dictionary that we have inside of line 309 and inside of line 306 or 336. So what we're passing in here is the additional three values for the image, uh, namely image URL, width, and height. So how can we uh, reduce the code here so that we can share all of the sending inside of another method? So I am going to show you exactly how to do this by pro providing a method private function. And this method will be called send message with, see, with properties. And properties is going to be a string to any object, Let's see, any object dictionary. So that's kind of what we need. And to show you what you actually need to kind of copy and paste over, I'm going to paste all that code. And here is kind of the magic. I want to actually just remove these last three properties here. And let's see, these three properties. I remove that comma. And I want to append, somehow append the properties dictionary uh, onto values somehow. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this method here and I need to, instead of calling all that code, I will just call send, uh, send message with properties. And in here, I need those three values. So let me just undo it a little bit. I need these three values here. So these three values inside of a dictionary. Let me just get the entire thing. I'm going to copy that and redo. So here's what I need. I need this values dictionary. So let properties equal this. And I need these three properties at the end of the dictionary, which is image URL, width, and height. And we'll end the dictionary like that. So inside of here, I'll just send the properties dictionary right above. And I think it might be even easier. Let's see if we just first cast this as a string to any object dictionary. I think we should be okay. And 
Now let's get back to this question right here. How do we append these properties onto this values array now? Well, this is pretty easy if you just say properties and you can call for each like this. And inside of here, you provide a open brace, closing brace, and you have access to two things, the key, which is dollar zero, and then the, let's see, let's see, the key is dollar zero and the value is dollar one. So inside of here, I can just say values dollar uh, zero equals dollar one. So let's see what that gives us. I think I need to make something a var. So we need to make this a var. And one more fix is to actually cast this as an any object. Let's click that one more time and we get this right here. So I believe if we just uh, declare a type of string to any object, we don't need that casting at the very end. So here we go. I think we can remove that perhaps and build. And the project looks okay. So let's test this now with this refactoring. And if I send an image over, I should get the image URL width and height. And if nothing has broken, the image should show up with its proper image height and width. So choose, we send, and it shows up here with the proper uh, image ratio. So that's how we kind of prove that it still works inside of our code here. Now, to reuse this method again, so send message with properties, I will send it in here as well. And the only thing I need to send is this text property right here. So what I'm going to do is let me just copy out that and put it up here. This will say properties instead, is a better name for it. And here we'll say send message with properties. And the properties in this case will just be this, I believe. So that's good. Properties like that. And now we can erase all of this code here. So where are we? Down here and down there. So this is a very good refactoring um, tip for you guys. So whenever you come back to your code, you're not super confused as to why you have two sets of code doing the exact same thing. Anyhow, we should be able to send text as well. So uh, this is another text for Sam, send, and it'll show up at the very bottom. Good stuff. Now, what else do I want to show you here? Well, you notice how every time I send a message, so one, two, three, the collection view really needs to scroll to that next message on the bottom. Uh, the way you would do that is to go to, let's see, I think observe, observe message right here. And every time we get one of these new messages appended to this dictionary, we call collection view reload data, which will eventually show the message. If we add some code in here, say uh, scroll to the last index, we can actually just get it to automatically scroll when we punch in some text or an image. So let's do that with the self collection view, uh, scroll to item index path. And what is this index path guy? So let index path equals, uh, what is this? NS index path like that for item. And the item will be self dot messages dot count. Let's see count minus one section of zero index path, fill that in right there. And I think this perhaps needs to be bottom and animation of true. So let's see what that'll give us whenever we are inside of the sending action of our message. So there we go, click on send entirely. And you notice how it automatically scrolls the entire collection view down. And if we do this, hey there bud, we bring that up and we get the message to show up right there. Let's see what happens when we send an image. So let's send Arya Stark right there, sends it over and it automatically just shows up right there. Uh, one thing I want to fix is inside of here, if I click on these guys, the seems to be editable text in there. So why don't we go back to chat message cell. We can say tv.editable equals false. So that's going to disable the behavior where we can actually edit the text inside of those chat bubbles. And I think I have one more thing to show you guys. So if we click in here, nothing happens, which is good. 
Uh, the last thing I want to kind of show you guys is inside of Chatlock controller, I can implement a function that tells this thing to scroll the moment I show the keyboard like this. And if I go into Chatlock controller inside of view to load right here, uh, I want to set up a keyboard observer, kind of like what we did in the couple of episodes before. And if I uncomment that and click into set up keyboard observers, I can comment this out. I want to set, set up a notification whenever the keyboard shows. So it is neither will show or will hide. The actual message or the method will be something else. So let's do notification center defaults uh, center add observer <laughs> and the observer itself selector will be uh, pound selector, I think, selector, and we'll use handle keyboard did show. So it's going to be did show instead. So we'll use keyboard did show notification with an object of nil. Now I can provide this function down here, which is function that, and let's see. What I want to do is I want to scroll to the last index of the collection view again. So in other words, I'll call collection view, scroll to item index path, and we need the last index path again, which is index path, and as index path, and we'll use for item self. Uh, I don't think we need the self here. Messages.count minus one. Section is going to be zero. Let's use index path here. And I think this needs to be perhaps top. Let's see what top is. Uh, animated is true. So if I run this, I believe I'll see a crash, but uh, let's make sure by confirming with our own very, very own eyes. And here we go, click there, and that happens, and that occurs. So if you do see a crash on your side, you just need to say, if uh, messages.count is greater than zero, then we execute this code. So there we go, <laughs> just in case you guys see a crash. So let's do this, why don't we? Let's see what Igrit is. So Igrit, and you see how it kind of crashed right there. I believe if there are no messages inside, then you'll see a crash. So let's run our application again. Uh, let's bring up Igrit here. And hi, hey there, girl. Send, and we get the message inside. Let's send her image perhaps send one of the default images that come with the simulator. Send, 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 and there we go. So back and going to Igrit, we get this. So we still have to fix this where we don't have a message for uh, whenever someone sends an image. And if I bring back my phone here, let's see. I think we can present something like this with sent an image as the actual text. So that's a possibility but nothing too hard to implement now that our code is kind of working. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this video. In the next episode, I wanna show you guys how to implement the functionality that allows us to press on the image to zoom it in and then press on it again to zoom it back out. And make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video. Also subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for the rest of the Firebase 3 series.